it's going to be a little bit different in this sermon. I, um, I'm going to ask our worship team to stay with me. And, um, there are moments when the king comes in a room and the way he, the way he just walks in, it's, it's got to be different. It's got to be different. Not a single person on this stage that's singing and playing instruments practice any of those songs. They, they didn't practice any of those songs. That was... That's a team in the back that's going, okay, where's those words and where are those words? And, and um, there are moments where... It's just got to be different. So if I could have my Bible, well, it's already there, right? So, yeah, thank you. Um, t- today, th- there's a lot of fill in the blanks, and I'm not going to give you any of those. And I know that frustrates all of you at some point. But um, we'll, we'll post it on Instagram, and you could fill, you could just write in the blanks and... Um, I'll, I'll take I'll take a picture of my um, my lister guide and I'll put it on Instagram and you could just have all my notes I promise you. In Second Samuel chapter five, verse seventeen, it says, "When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David, but David heard of it and went down to the stronghold." How many of you are military personnel? Would you just raise your hand? How many of you are military personnel? You, you, yeah, thank you for your service. Grateful for you. You mean so much to us. Military personnel understands stronghold. Military strategy is develop the stronghold, which means get to the higher ground, gain a strategic advantage, which usually in a situation is, is to get a higher perspective, get to an angle that allows you to be able to operate in swift efficiency because they won't see it's coming or you got a different level of understanding because you see all of it. David is king and he heard that the Philistines were coming to defeat him. And the Bible says he went down, let me say it again, down, not up, down to the stronghold. He didn't go up to a stronghold because the stronghold is at a place of advantage, a strategic advantage that allows you to look down on the situation. But David does something. He goes down to the stronghold. Spirit of God has just been marinating and percolating in my heart that oftentimes we want to go up, but before we can go up, we got to go down. We, we, we got to get low. We got to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. And when we humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord, then we gain a stronghold. I, I, it's backwards to a military strategy. You gain, you gain the stronghold by a higher position. But in the kingdom, in this battle that's not against flesh and blood, but of principalities and demonic forces, you don't try to go high on your own but you get low. You humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And then the Bible says he will exalt you in due season. I've not shared this in any other service, but the spirit of the living God just downloaded. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name that's above every name, that the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That was done after Jesus came low he came low Emmanuel God with us wrapped in human flesh Philippians chapter 2 would say this he, he did not consider equality with God something grasped he didn't use the God powers to serve himself he didn't turn the rock and turn it into bread for his own doing but instead would teach us how to go low 
how to humble ourselves. It's last weekend's message, empty out the vessel so God could pour out the anointing. God's looking for empty vessels, not tall vessels, not cool vessels with handles and etch a sketch on it. No, he just needs empty vessels. That's all he needs is an empty vessel to pour out his anointing and his overflow. And David goes low. He goes low. And as he goes low into a cave, which was not an unfamiliar place for David, he'd been there before. Another king had tried to kill him, King Saul. Couldn't find him. He hides in the, king, in the cave of, of, of Adullam, and the word Adullam means refuge. He found the refuge. How many of you know this, that in order to gain a stronghold over the, over the devil and the demonic forces of hell, you, you got to get a stronghold that's built brick by brick in the low places, in the secret places, which is the prayer closet. It's by you spending time in God's word. It's about you praying and asking God in faith to do the immeasurably more in you. God, develop the stronghold in my life. I, I cannot chase after the things of this world. I cannot pursue the answers of this world. I'm not looking for philosophies and principles and precepts that are ideologies of lofty thinking. God, I need a supernatural breakthrough in my life. I'm surrounded by the enemy that seeks to destroy me and decimate me. So God, I got to go low. I got to go low because God, I, I need you to do something for me. I can't do it myself, so I go low. He gets into the cave, he goes low. This would be a cave that he ran back to multiple times. The first time he went into the cave of Adullam, 400 men that everybody had overlooked. I'm talking to somebody today that feels overlooked, unnoticed. God, God sent 400 people to David in the lowest place of his life, but they were people that would not have fit into society. The Bible called them scoundrels. <laughs> Am I talking to a scoundrel today? Anybody that's got a scathing past, somebody that goes, oh man, anytime I tell them I go to CBC and anytime I tell them I'm doing the Jesus thing, they're like, you? I knew you when? And you got some people that will freeze frame you in your past, but I got a God that'll break the frame. I got a God that'll break the frame. Some people will just keep you and what you did, but there's a God that's got something for you that's in the future, and you, 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 got, you got to believe him for it. But he went into this cave, and 400 men came to him that were in debt, distressed, and depressed. And watch this. God took 400 men that nobody wanted, and through King David, made them men that everybody wanted. And now the Philistines are coming for David. And guess who's standing? I'm not talking about the 300. I'm talking about the 400. They're standing. Standing with the man of God in that moment going, listen, brother, we've been here before. God will give us victory. They're outnumbered, outmatched. But then all of a sudden, David began to seek the Lord. And he said this in verse 19. Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you give them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, go up, for I will certainly give the Philistines into your hand. And watch this, verse 20. And David came to Baal Perazim. Baal is the word master or Lord. Perazim means breakthrough. Watch this. In verse 20, then the Lord gives victory. David defeated them there. The Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breaking flood like a breaking flood, because when the breakthrough comes, it comes instantly. When the breakthrough comes, it comes suddenly. When the breakthrough comes, anything that is in its way has to be moved. David goes, when the breakthrough came, it came like a mighty flood. Just like in Acts chapter two, when the breakthrough came through the power of the Holy Spirit, it sounded like a mighty rushing wind. Anything in its path, is displaced and moved and David names this place this place of victory this is the place that I will call the God of breakthrough but many of us in this room your breakthrough has not yet come and I say the word yet intentionally underlined and underscored and highlighted yet but what if I were to tell you that God's doing a breakthrough in you there is a breakthrough for what you've been praying for but what if the breakthrough's been happening in you? 
What, what if God has begun to change some things in your life that has allowed you and to understand that the pain that you've been going through in the waiting, in the crushing, that God has been cultivating something in you that is allowing you to understand that you, you didn't sign up for the diagnosis, you, you didn't long for the prognosis, but in your cancer, in your battle, that disease, that affirmity, the, uh, that affliction, that situation, that circumstance, that job place that you feel as if is so defeating and a dead end. God's using all of it, all of it, to cultivate a breakthrough in you. God wants to change your circumstances. God wants to change your situation. But what if God, in the point of desperation, goes, before I do what you're asking me to do, how about I change you? Here's the reason why. Because there's going to be another challenge you face when God gives you the breakthrough. There'll be another obstacle. But then you get better equipped. Watch this. Oh, the Spirit of God, just put this in my spirit. All of you, all of you in this room, myself included, we, we just hope one day things will get easier. Things will get easier. So what happens is we start wishing away some things. When my kids are able to walk, they'll be able to get somewhere on their own. And then one day they're driving. And one day they're gone. And we start wishing away things. That life will be so much easier. Life will be different when I get a little bit older, a little bit older. People will respect me more when I get 50 or statements I've heard people say and I've even said myself. If I get a little bit more gray-haired, people will think I got wisdom. And then all of a sudden it came like a flood. And then, <laughs> But notice this. We always begin to look at our situation in the hard and go, I want it to be easier. But what if I were to tell you it's not going to get easier, but actually you get better prepared to handle the hard. So the hard doesn't stop. The hard doesn't go away. You just get stronger that every situation you face that God has cultivated in you a spirit of, I will get through this. The only way that sometimes you'll get around it is to go through it. But there's a God that says to you, well, you'll never go alone in this journey. And Roger Lopez, who I've talked about all weekend, I met with him this week, a brother that's my age, he had colon cancer and living on a 100% commission, selling houses for a home builder in our city. So he goes into a neighborhood, sets up a model home, and then meets with clientele and shows them the homes that have been built, diagnosed with colon cancer. Later would find out that he's got multiple tumors in his head, two of which are behind his eyes. And I went to go see him this week and in the midst of this conversation with Roger, he said this, and I'll never forget this. I mean, it's forever etched and sketched to my soul. Sitting on his couch, he said this, I thank God for the cancer. I go, Roger, how can you say that? He goes, I know God's gonna heal me. I believe it. But what I've learned about God in these days, I would have never learned in my life if I didn't go through this cancer. That I've, I've learned that God can be trusted. He said, Ed, listen to me, I'm 100% commissioned and I sold a house the other day while I was in the hospital. I can't even see the house. But because I know through a divine ability, because of the housing plans that I'm familiar with, I could see it in my mind. So I'm able to talk on a phone and tell them about the house without even walking them through the house. Tell me God won't do it. Sometimes, sometimes we got to go through some challenges, adversity. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. God is not the cause of the cancer, but he allowed it to happen. Why? Why did he allow the hard? Why, why did he allow the losing of a child or the death of a loved one or a divorce or whatever it may be. He didn't break through at the moment you were asking. But what if God goes, hey, listen, I'm not the cause of any of that stuff. But I will teach you something and cultivate something in you that will prepare you for the next space and place in your life that you will need. You will need for this next journey, this next chapter, this new oil. See, if God gave us a life exempt from adversity, hardship, then we'd find ourselves living on the mountaintop. And can I just make this statement? We were never intended to live on the mountaintop because eventually we would take for granted the goodness of God and his faithfulness 
And we would just think it's like this always. But then sometimes when you hit the valley, all you can do is look up and go, God, you're the God of the breakthrough. But if you don't change my situation, change something in me. Do something in me. Roger said it, my relationship with the Lord is more intimate than it's ever been in my entire life. I believe God can be trusted. And when you and I think about the challenges that we face, sometimes, let me just see if I can flip the script, there are moments in our life that God doesn't give us the breakthrough because there's things in our life that, that we have not yet surrendered to the Lord. Just like you as moms and dads that want to bestow blessing on your children, I don't know if I could illustrate this well enough, but has there been a moment, moms and dads and aunts and uncles and grandparents, that you want to be a blessing to that child, but you can't because they have been living, they've been wilding out, they've been doing some crazy stuff, doing some stuff that obviously is not worthy of blessing. And have you ever felt this? It pains you not to be able to bless them. You want to give it to them. You got it already bought, purchased, and wrapped. But they don't have a heart to receive it because their mentality is selfish or maybe they have not been obedient. Watch this. God has gifts upon gifts upon gifts and it pains him not to be able to pour out his blessing on your life because we're living in disobedience. He goes, why do you call me Lord and do not do what I've been telling you to do? Why do you doubt me? And how about this one? God doesn't give us the answer to the prayer we've been praying in James 4 because we pray with the wrong motives. Because we've been asking for the breakthrough and then we get the breakthrough and then we'll rob God of his glory. Make it seem as if we did this for ourselves. So God has to withhold the blessing until we get our hearts right to what he wants us to do, which is to, once more, go low. Go low in humility. Asking pride to be removed from us. Anger and bitterness. And sometimes God wants to bring the breakthrough, but we've been harboring unforgiveness towards people. Listen to me. I need you to be set free today. You've been hurt. You've been wounded. And you've been waiting on somebody to tell you, I'm sorry, and it has not happened. And you've lived in perpetual ideology of, if I could just get them to say, I'm sorry, my life will be different. I need you in faith to believe that forgiveness, God will give you the power to do it, which by the way, is not forgiving and forgiving. Getting, only God could do that. There are going to be moments that you'll still remember, but you forgiving somebody ain't about them. It's about you being set free, positioning yourself in a place to receive what God has in store. Meanwhile, you all messed up and twisted with bitterness and anger, and God wants to do something in you. So to receive the breakthrough, sometimes we got to go, God, things haven't been going my way and I've been frustrated with you, but now I understand, God, you're doing something in me, so I got to trust you. Or maybe there's some things I've been holding back that I need to fully submit and surrender to you so the breakthrough could come. But I need you to know that we serve a God of the breakthrough because when it comes, it comes like a flood. It comes instantly. But I want to put myself in the place. I, I want to be at the spout where the glory of God comes out. I just want to be right. God, I want to position myself because when the breakthrough comes like a mighty rushing water, oh, like the early disciples, they were in the upper room waiting on the Holy Spirit, waiting for the breakthrough. And so while we wait, I need you to know that God's doing something in you. And I believe today, today, the God of the breakthrough wants to put something in your spirit that I believe will allow you to experience the breakthrough now. On the screen right now, to my right, your left, you'll see these images that'll hopefully pop up. I don't know if they're gonna pop up right now. Maybe they'll show up. There they are. A bell and some footholds. For those of you online, you're seeing this right now. Bell and footholds. If you've ever done some rock climbing, and I've only done it because I was speaking at events that had this as an, a free time activity, and I would try to get some street cred with some middle school and high school kids, and I'd go out to the rock climbing wall, and I was way too old to get on that contraption. But these footholds gave strategic advantage points to be able to pull yourself up. You got a harness on, there's a rope, you're being belayed up. But at the top of the rock climbing wall is a bell. 
when the wall was conquered, you would ring the bell. And this one particular time, I was climbing this 60-foot rock climbing wall. I was so nervous, my, my legs were shaking like jello. And I finally get to the top, and whoever invented this contraption obviously wasn't walking with the Lord, that it was <laughs> bent backwards at the very top. And I went, oh, they want me to go Sylvester Stallone cliffhanger in this moment. And I knew I couldn't do it. I knew I couldn't do it. So I was just gonna make one big jump off the wall and try to hit the bell. I jumped off the wall, missed it, came down, so disappointed. Watch many of these other kids do this. And I thought to myself, as I was thinking about this illustration, I need you to know that there's a devil in your life that wants to ring the bell of you being conquered in defeat, despair, depression, and dejection. And the only way that the devil gets to the top to ring the bell in your defeat daily, he will seek to destroy and kill you. But the only way he could get to the top and ring the bell is if he's got a foothold to get to the top. Ephesians 4.27 says, give no footholds to the devil. See, a foothold will turn into a stronghold. What's a stronghold? Any moment in your life that the devil's ringing the bell in your life. It's over your marriage, it's over your finances, it's over your children, it's over your own emotional health, your physical health. It just seems as if it's constant defeat. But I am 10 toes down on this stage today, decreeing and declaring that the breakthrough that you've been praying for, I believe will come. But I believe there's a breakthrough that needs to happen right now by the power of the Holy Spirit of God that these footholds, which by the way, have been custom made by the devil to fit your situation. And every one of your footholds are different from your neighbor next to you. And the devil has been ringing the bell of defeat. How do you know if there's a stronghold in your life? See, footholds lead to strongholds, which gives the devil, watch this, a strategic advantage, the high ground. But watch what David does. He doesn't go to the high ground. He goes to the low ground. He, he goes down to go up. What you and I need to understand is what des destroys and demolishes every foothold that leads to a stronghold of the devil ringing the bell in your life defeated is you and I understanding 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. It says that the weapons that we fight with, come on somebody, the weapons we fight with are not of this world. Not of this world, but has the divine power to pull down every stronghold. How? By taking captive every thought. So when you, in a 21 days of prayer and fasting, have an identity in Christ, I'm a son, I'm a daughter, I feast on the things of God's Word. Watching many of you read the Bible daily for the first time, that's breakthrough. You got a renewed mind. You think differently about yourself. You think differently about situations. Your will, your desires now have come to the place in your life where you go, God, your will, not mine. Walking in victory, choosing to look at temptation, which by the way comes for all of us and going, Jesus, I pick you over that. I know what it'll lead me back to. It'll feel good for a moment, but I know what's attached to it. It's got guilt and shame, and I'm gonna trust that God is able. See, by the way, brothers and sisters, that's a breakthrough. You've been praying for a breakthrough, but what if the breakthrough's been happening in you and you just didn't know it? It's been happening in you. And here's what I wanna just deliver to you today. I, I just wanna make this, this sermon a little bit sticky. Every foothold, by the way, do you see those holes? Has a bolt with a nut on the end of it that basically fastens it to the wall. And every bolt is the same size. See, the devil will bolt a foothold to your life. See, he can't get to the top to ring the bell of defeat. See, this is your life. Footholds all over it. But what if I were to tell you today that by you choosing to pull down the strongholds, believing who you are in Christ Jesus, that there is nothing in your life that can enslave you when the power of Christ has come to set you free. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to disarm the powers that be so that you and I could walk in victory. And though the devil will accuse us day and night, the devil has been conquered by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, which means I need somebody to hear this today, that you've been given the power 
to go up to every foothold that the devil has anchored in your life and take the power of who Jesus is. And with right thinking, I'm a son of the living God, foothold comes down. That I, through the power of the word of God, man said I live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, foothold comes down. I got a renewed mind. I will no longer let garbage in, garbage out, but I believe correctly about myself. Foothold comes down. When you and I begin to understand that we can live in the full destiny and purpose and plan and will of God, not living to the trinkets of this world, foothold comes down. When you and I choose to give up bitterness and unforgiveness and all those unfortunate, toxic, venomous ideologies of my life would be better if they would get what was coming to them. Instead, you go in Jesus' name. They're yours. Foothold comes down. What we're believing in faith is that the devil won't ring the bell again in your life. But the only way that happens is you take the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, come on, and really begin to start removing some footholds. Let me tell you what this invitation is. I'm talking to somebody today that needs to start living in the freedom and the fullness of what Jesus has called you to walk in. No more defeat. No more. No more in 24. Come on, hashtag that. No more in 24. Ringing the bell of defeat over your life. Walk in the victory that Jesus has given you. But you've got to pull down through the power of the gospel these strongholds and these footholds. How do you do that? Go low. Go low. And he'll lift you up high. I'm going to ask our prayer partners to be at the front. I'm going to ask our worship team to come join me. And I believe there's somebody in the room today that you need to be anointed with oil over your, your prognosis and your diagnosis. We're believing for breakthrough. I believe somebody needs to be prayed for strategically and intentionally that a foothold will come down. You got to name these footholds. Where does the devil got a foothold, a strategic advantage in your life? And by the power of the gospel, start letting these footholds come down. And when there's no foothold, there won't be no bell ringing in 24 in your life of defeat. We can walk in victory, purpose, his goodness. It doesn't mean that we won't face adversity. But when we go through the hard, watch this. When we go through the hard, we won't let the devil, watch what he does. When we go through the hard, he puts a foothold when we start going, well, God, you must not love me. You let me go through this trial and adversity. No, listen, God loves you. That he's going to teach you something through it. But see, the devil will make you so mad at God. Foothold. But today, footholds come down in the name of Jesus. Strongholds come down in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's stand together. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. Father, I pray victory, freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is, come on church, freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, come on, let's say it out loud. There is what? Freedom. One more time. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Strongholds, footholds come down in the matchless name of Jesus, God. For those that have given their life to you today, let them step out. Tell a prayer partner, gave my life to Jesus. So Father God, we bless you. We love you. We thank you, God, for your goodness in Jesus' name. Come on, let's sing this together. We got a reason to praise. We got a reason to praise. Come on, let's sing this.
God, listen to me. God didn't bring you this far, Plata. He didn't bring you this far to drop you now. I watch what God did do in your body. I watch, I watch God heal you. I watched it. Saw you in the hospital. Here you are. I saw it. God can do it. If he said it, he can do it. So you don't doubt in the dark what you saw in the light don't you doubt in the dark what you saw in the light so let's stretch out our hand in the direction of this altar I believe the spirit of God is still working this service is going to dismiss but I believe that there are people that need to stay I think there are people that need to, to linger our prayer team is here and available. Our pastors are here and available. Somebody needs, before they get back in their car and go right back into the, to the hustle of life, that you just need to linger for a minute. Let somebody pray with you in faith. But God, I pray over every single person at this front, every single person in a seat, every single person watching online. Father God, thank you. Thank you that you're the miracle worker, God. Thank you that you're the way maker. Thank you, God, that you're the pain taker. God, thank you that even in the midst of the adversity, you are adjusting things in our lives that allow us to get a fuller glimpse of who you are. And God, I pray, help us, help us to be steadfast, immovable. That God, that we would stay firmly planted, trusting that God, if you said it, You'll do it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said amen, amen. 